What do you do when you're a naturalist and you're stuck indoors because of this coronavirus? You start reading books like crazy. That's what you do. And then and then you go and you go to uh, places like, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Bioquip. And then you start purchasing stuff that you think might attract some wildlife to you. Like this black light. Really cheap, actually. And... What do I get with that? Well, I get lots of moths coming, uh, other bugs too, coming into my windows at night. And I want to show you some moths that I've uh, collected and put up on uh, iNaturalist. This is my picture, so no copyright infringement here. Uh, here's uh, Promolactus zuzukiella. It's similar to another one. Let me see if I can... Oh yeah, there you go. Damn light. Anyway. Uh, it's, it's similar to another one that occurs in, uh, in naturally in the area, but this is a, a, an invasive species. And you know what? It's not even in the... It's not even in the moth guide, Peterson moth guide. Uh, and that's because it's only shown up in the last 15 years or so, probably less time, maybe more like 10, to, 10 years. But it's all over. It's all over the place. And, you know, fortunately, I'm able to get things like this and allow, and my wife allows me, she lets me just go ahead and uh, <laughs> let bugs into the apartment. And that's important, you know, you can't piss off your wife too much because, uh, you know, things can go bad real fast. But uh, fortunately, my wife hasn't asked me for any divorce papers, so we're good. You know, it's important to get somebody who understands, who understands what you like, what you like to do, who gets it. Somebody who gets it. It's very important. Yeah, and I'm very thankful. And uh, you know, she doesn't complain too much when she finds the dead bugs in the fridge. We have an understanding. I'm not going to bring in any dead animals, any roadkill or anything into the fridge. Uh, so she's fine with it. Little bugs in little containers don't worry her too much. Thankfully, this is uh, Suzuki's Promolactus, Promolactus Suzukiella, and it's uh, invasive from East Asia. Uh, you know, a couple of years ago, you know, these guys are small enough to go through the screen, and a couple of years ago, they would uh, they would come in one or two per season, but this year, every night I'm getting anywhere between six, ten. <coughs> Uh, per hour and I keep killing them and more come in and it's non-stop and I can't find any literature right now on uh, on their effects on the ecology so maybe somebody out there can publish something make a study All right, it's actually a relatively pretty moth it's got like uh, it has a golden fringe to the four wings and couple of white lines and overall a, a brick red color very pretty too bad it's invasive yeah so I found this one floating in one of my aquariums this morning so I figured I'd use them as an example uh, to show you guys what to look for if you're interested in okay so here is a, a close-up of this uh, Suzuki's moth a Promolacta Suzukiella uh, it's in the Ecophoridae, in the uh, curved horned uh, moths group, which is in reference. Let's see if I can get this. This is in reference to these little structures here. Right there. Apparently we have some nice peach trees in the neighborhood. So these guys like to eat peach trees and chokeberry. I don't know about chokeberries in the neighborhood, but definitely peach trees. Yeah, so anyway, if you don't know what the uh, what these structures are that I was referring to are, these are the uh, labial palps, which in this family are elongated and, and thin at the end. See if I can get this in focus. Keep it in focus. There we go. All right, so they're elongated and thin at the end, so they look like little horns. They're sensory organs, uh, probably used for taste. 
And the whole family has uh, structures that look a lot like this. The, I mean, the, uh, the whole family has the, these labial palps that look like this. Most, of, most members of the Lepidoptera have this, but that is uh, not looking like this. So we know that moths are drawn to a flame. Well, it's uh, just past 11.58 uh, p.m. and all these moths are coming up. Got a little blue light too. Yeah, anyway, so here we have a common tan wave. It's not that uncommon, as the name uh, insists that it's common. Although it doesn't come around too often. I guess if I was outside collecting, I'd see it every night. But indoors, it doesn't like to come in too much. Anyway, uh, if you can, maybe you can see it. But uh, it does have a rather diffuse medial line. Subterminal line has some uh, little dark specks on it. It's a it's a nice geometer. And geometers are named after the habit of movement of the uh, the caterpillars. You know, they think of an inchworm. This is exactly what they are. So they look like they're measuring the earth as they move, or the stem, the twig, or whatever they're walking on. And geometers are this guy's displaying a typical geometer. Uh, position with the forewings spread out and the, and the hind wings spread out as well. All right, otherwise, a little brown, little brown job as they say, but uh, not too, no, no obvious pattern to it, unlike many others. So on the forewing you can see it has a terminal line and a medial. Terminal line is a little bit lighter. And otherwise, mostly a plain moth. Still pretty. So here's a pretty one, probably my favorite that comes into my home. Uh, it's got some color, you know, unlike the other ones that are little brown jobs or black jobs. These, uh, this one's the explicit arches. And it's a little hard to tell in this lighting, but it's got a, a subterminal line that's broken up by a black dash. I, otherwise, a really nice green color, I guess, to blend in with some some sort of vegetation or other. Right. Look at that terminal, those terminal dots. Real pretty, real nice. Like I was saying, the last couple of nights, uh, well, maybe I didn't say it, but the last couple of nights we've been getting lots of these explicit arches. It's hard to get to it. There, there's two. And there's a third one over there. That little dot over there. And some more of these guys. Suzuki. There's one. There's one doing little circles here. Here's another very common one. This is the uh, the white speck or the army worm, uh, and it's I forget the genus, but the species epithet is unipunct unipunctata, which means uni spotted. Oh, there it's moving. It's very very common. Seen see it all throughout the warm season from April all the way through October, and it um, comes in. In regular numbers. Uh, over the month of August it's been coming in at uh, four or five per night. Very common. Very easy to identify with that white speck in, on, the four, on the four wings. So the white speck is also a, uh, well it's a member of the Noctuidae 
so it's a knock to it. Uh, and there are a lot of similar species, but you can tell this one with the uh, with the white speck, the white spot on the reniform spot. All right, uh, and it can be very numerous, but like I said before, but it's it can also be numerous to the point of being a pest, especially on crops. So here's another one. It's, uh, it's a little bit prettier than what it looks like on the on the video. It's uh, the tobacco budworm moth, and uh, yeah, you can tell from the the three lines on the forewings, and it also usually shows those three dots on the abdomen. Well, you know, I don't know if that's important or not. Here's uh, Permalactus Suzukiella again. Is that one very common? Very small. Here's that one. And there's about. Here's another one. There, tiny little guy. And. Here's another one. Really pretty, like I said, but you know, very common and not native. There's another one by my wall over there. Oh, okay. not sure what this guy is. Oh, hey, hey, there's a nice one here. I don't know what this one is. I'll be putting you and I naturalist. Look at those rendered form spots. Yeah, real, real good. Yeah, I'm going to be putting you and I naturalist. All right. See you guys another time.